According to our current understanding of the universe, um, the physical universe is actually made up of energy and information. Wherever there are objects, there are fields of energy and also of information. And if you go to the very fundamental levels of activity in nature, you find that nature is a discontinuity, which means even though our perceptual experience of the universe is that it's continuous, in fact, it's going on and off at the speed of light. We know what's in the on of the universe. It's energy and information. We use it in our technology when we use cell phones or surf the information highway on the internet to sell or send each other email. But the deeper question is what's in the off? What's between the two ons in the discontinuity? And many people in quantum physics, in the world of quantum physics, are realizing or thinking or hypothesizing that the discontinuity is consciousness itself. That consciousness is not a byproduct of evolution, as has been suggested, or for that matter, an expression of our brains, although it expresses itself through our brains. That consciousness is the uh, common ground of existence that ultimately differentiates into space-time, energy, information, and matter. And the same consciousness is responsible for our thoughts, for our emotions and feelings, for our behaviors, for our personal relationships, for our social interactions, for the environments that we find ourselves in, and for our biology. In other words, Consciousness is the ground of being that differentiates into everything that we call reality, including the observer and the objects of our observation. And this is a much uh, deeper understanding of consciousness that is coming about as a result <coughs> of some insights from the world of quantum physics. Not everyone agrees uh, uh, on this theory. In fact, a number of scientists are still tied to the old paradigm, which is that matter is the essential reality and that consciousness is the epiphenomenon. But it turns out that um, even to explain simple things, how do you perceive color? How do you imagine? How do you see pictures in consciousness and hear sounds in consciousness? You have to recognize that this cannot be explained by any reductionist model when you experience a sound or a color or a taste or a smell, um, the activity in your brain is just a, a code of uh, charges that goes on and off. How does that code of charges going on and off become physical reality and where does that happen? Uh, if we understand this model of quantum physics, then it, it becomes apparent that uh, we are not in the physical world. The physical world is in us. We create the physical world in the, uh, when we perceive it, when we observe it, and also we create its experience in our imagination. And when I say we, I don't mean the physical body or the brain, but that deeper domain of consciousness which conceives, governs, constructs, and actually becomes everything that we call physical reality. This is a model that is being explored by some cutting-edge scientists, both in the field of neuroscience and also in the field of quantum physics. But it is also a model that was explored by the great sages and seers, some of whom were the authors of the Bhagavad Gita itself.